guys, so in our last drawing tutorial, I covered the basics of how I draw chibis for con stuff. Um, we covered how to draw the basic body and how to draw the basic head. Today, I'm going to show you guys that there are actually a number of variations on this theme. So I'm gonna get started with a purple pencil and hopefully this pencil will show up a little bit better for you guys than that non-photo blue. Well, it wasn't even a real non-photo blue. So we'll start with the standard. This is what I do the most of. So I start with a sphere, then I bring it down and I'm gonna draw a Kara from my comic seven inch Kara for all of these just to be consistent and so that I'm not stopping and trying to think of character design elements. So for one variation, I might actually draw her chin. And when it comes to Kara, I uh, don't really have a consistent way of handling jibbies for her. It's whatever I think will be cute. So big, round eye. Those are actually kind of high up for how I normally draw. So usually you're going to draw the eyes a little lower, especially on kids than you normally would. So we've got the face is broken up into three eyes plus half an eye space on either side, a cute little nose, fairly large expressive mouth that tends to make, at least in my opinion, it makes for cuter. So uh, my sense of cute probably skews on the American cartoony side than the, the traditional Japanese kind of cute, which would be the big eyes, a tiny nose, and maybe a little mouth. But I think big mouths are cute. And I also tend to do fairly large hair when I'm doing chibi drawings. And for my normal drawing style, her hair features are sort of broken up simply to begin with because it's quicker to draw. So that would be a basic chibi head for Kara. It is pretty similar to, let me actually draw her regular face. And draw it a little smaller so I'm less tempted to make it a chibi so. And even for my normal style, I don't normally do the five eye widths, although this is a little closer to that. So the nose is gonna be bigger Smile is still going to be pretty big. Um, I think, you know, big expressive mouth movements are really cute, so I tend to go for that. So you see in sort of the most basic sketch, the, there's a lot of similarities between how I normally draw her in the comic and how I would um, sort of caricature her. So I'm going to go ahead, tighten this up just a little bit. Her eyes from this style to this style don't actually change a whole lot except in size. And you can actually see how I handle drawing Kara page after page in watercolor by checking out 7inchkara.tumblr.com or 7inchkara.com. Those are both, uh, places where you can read this as a webcomic. So I tend to give her really big eyebrows when I'm doing the chibi style and also big eyes. And I'll probably usually do like a little bit of cheek blush and then what I call jug handle ears. So a lot of the features that I use in this style have been lifted from like Disney cartoons, Warner Brother cartoons. So over here, since she's front facing, Kara has kind of a, a weird nose, but since she's front facing, I'll draw the nose in a little bit more detail. These eyes are actually kind of spaced close together, closer than what I would normally do. So her face is longer and narrower. I guess that's basically the same thing, but her head in general is longer. There is, her features are not quite as babyish as say in the chibi drawing, you would think this was a face of a toddler, whereas this is more the face of like a 10 or 11 year old little girl. The eyebrows are smaller, but they're still pretty big because as a character, she has big eyebrows. I think big eyebrows are pretty cute. 
I draw the ears with a little bit more detail for my normal style. Hair is almost the same though, because it's already a pretty simplified way of handling hair. Neck is more articulated. Okay, so that's one style. Another style that I commonly do is dots rides, and I do dots rides in a lot of ways. Um, we'll do a really basic one, and all of these sort of fall into the super deformed or chibi bracket, depending on which one you're more familiar with. Some of you guys might just think of this as cartoony. So for dots for eyes, it is really simplified. I do the crosshairs on top of my sphere just to make sure I line everything up right. But for someone as young as Kara, she really doesn't need a whole lot of a jaw. So I'll often sort of go with like the cutesy squarish jaw with the big round bulb head. And then I might even make her hair more puffy than I normally would sort of exaggerate that, which helps exaggerate the big bulbous head. And see, when you break it down, when you explain it, it doesn't sound cute at all. It's like, oh, that sounds kind of weird. But we're kind of um, taking advantage of a natural human re reaction to certain features, which is just think of it like babyfication, right? The more you make something look like a baby, big eyes, big head, smaller other features, the more people are going to think it's cute. So that's dot for eyes. And then there's like a million things that I will do in between these two styles. And something I like to do for practice is if an artist or an illustrator has a style that I think is cute, I'll try drawing Kara in that style and sort of dismantle what I like about their work and what works for me and what doesn't. I try to do as faithful a re rendition as possible and then I'll sort of, if I don't really care for how she looks in their style, I'll sort of do my own spin. And in some styles I will draw her eyebrows really really thick but not very long. But even, even when you are working with these really simplified styles, you still have a lot of room to push expression. And for me, that's important because I think that's what makes characters cute. Like even if it kind of breaks the character design or makes the character look a little ugly, it's sort of like the Studio Ghibli approach towards expressions. Like I would way rather the over expression that could be kind of ugly because that feels more real. Uh, we ugly smile and we ugly cry and we get ugly angry. We're not always cute, we're not always pretty. Um, so I really, I know I'm not really <laughs> demonstrating that with these because they're all the, sort of the same expression. They're all kind of generically cute. But um, for the comic, I like to push it a little bit. So let's see, that's three styles. And then sometimes I'll go really cartoony. So I'll have like sort of the super rounded jaw and then like the really big eyes, but the big eyes are gonna be really simplified. And the big ears tends to be those big round ears tend to be a staple for my work. I guess I just think they're cute. Which is fine, right? Developing your own sort of cartooning style or your own way of drawing this style of art, that's important. You need to go with what you like, even if other people don't necessarily get it. So, gonna keep the heavy eyelashes from this style, but we're gonna keep sort of the simple eyes with a big highlight that are blackened in. Now I want bigger eyebrows than that. And we also want bigger hair forms and maybe simplify them. So we went with really big hair for this one so that's, let's see, four chibi styles and one normal style. Um, I think this is a pretty good start. I 
gosh, I kind of wanted to like fill the page with them, but I'm also like, hmm, I guess every, all of the styles that I tend to go with um, tend to be, you know, on a scale from dots to eyes to fairly anime looking. So um, I hope this has inspired you. I hope it has, um, I hope you've learned something. I hope you're going to try something out new today. And I hope you will go and pick five artists who have a style that you enjoy that you would like to try drawing your character in their style. It can be webcomic artists, it can be comic comic artists, it can be cartoonists, it can be people on Instagram. I wouldn't claim that style as your own, but you should practice other people's styles and picking up things that they do well and picking out things that you don't care for so much in your own work that maybe they handle well, but you don't handle well. Um, my work is heavily inspired by Rumika Takahashi and Adachi Mitsuru and Kyohika Zuma. And with a little bitty bit of Naoki Urasawa, I wish there was more of that in there as well as like, or Disney cartoons from like the golden afternoon, Disney afternoon in the nineties and Warner Brothers stuff that I grew up watching and reading Tex Avery's uh, notes on how to make things cute have all really inspired my work and influenced my, my drawings. So um, I hope that you guys can name five artists that you like off the top of your heads. If you're looking for artists who do sort of really cute, uh, simplified art, I highly recommend you check out uh, DGGG's art. If you're not reading Cucumber Quest, that's a great comic and you should go check that out. Um, I also recommend my friend Kabocha's comic, Linked. It is very reminiscent to me of Rumiko Takahashi. So if you like those sort of cartoony manga styles, you will really enjoy her art in a completely different direction. If you enjoy cartoony and more American, I recommend Eric Lide's Ozzy the Vampire. And you guys can find links to all of those comics below, as well as to my comic, Seven Inch Kara, which I hope you will also enjoy in the description. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. As always, it's a pleasure. And I wanna see you guys again really soon. So make sure you subscribe and click that little bell so that you always get notifications when I update and I update twice a week. So that is two afternoons of goodness for you guys. So have a great day, guys. Bye.